Well, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Very pleased to be connecting with you today. It is a Tuesday noontime here in Hawaii. We have a little bit of windy weather outside, but nothing like what most of the world is receiving. A lot of uh, storms in certain parts of the northern hemisphere. So I guess I'm beyond blessed to be in this part of the world. I'm very grateful for your joining today. I hope you get some value out of today's live stream. Um, what I'll be focusing on is how we can honor our own spiritual journey, honor the other spiritual journey, but mostly how we can be uh, in a place where our apple cart is not upset because those closest to us are husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, kids, mothers, fathers, family, friends, best friends, those closest to us who often um, love to judge us for our spiritual positions. Um, today will be about how we can have the best kind of communication that will serve everybody involved. So I hope that this is something that will be of interest to you. Uh, I personally have found that <clears throat> it's a bit of a learning curve because a lot of things um, can happen that can ostracize relationships, um, can create difficulty with those that we care about, those that we love. And sometimes it's because of, of their communication and their very poor responses and, and forms of communication. And sometimes it's just our inability to express what we want to say. And sometimes we <laughs> should not be saying something. So we'll talk about all these different parameters today. But uh, there's a lot of people out there that are on a spiritual journey. And sometimes that journey takes them away from organized belief structures. And that creates, um, uh, it creates um, concerns for our loved ones who always try to save us. And so we'll talk a little bit about that today. So welcome Pamela, aloha Shelly, welcome Samba. Welcome also Jennifer Chris Smith, aloha Nadia. And welcome Sharon Dodd, uh, welcome Carrie, aloha Thomas. Welcome also to Walter Boyd. <clears throat> thank you so much for your presence. And thank you for also clicking on the share button to let other people know about this live stream. It will probably resonate with quite a few people uh, because um, anybody who is watching this or anybody who uh, is on a spiritual journey um, could benefit from this wisdom. So I personally have been on my spiritual journey since the age of 20, <clears throat> but I moved out of the house at the age of 18. I couldn't wait to get out of the house. I was living in an environment where I had a stepfather who unfortunately was not that pleasant to be around. So I moved out early and uh, uh, started on my spiritual journey about age 20. So I didn't really have any close connections and didn't have any major relationships until after age 30. So my world, I didn't have anybody that I needed to explain things to. Uh, but a lot of you do. And over the course of the years of my enlightenment path, uh, which I'm still quite a long way from, from reaching enlightenment, but along the path, I've learned a few things and I'll share some of those wisdoms with you today. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you for your presence. Aloha, Christina Barker. Uh, welcome also to Sorcha and Aloha, Tone. Thank you so much for all of your presence today. Thank you for clicking the share button to also let other people know about today's live stream. Sharing helps. Also, clicking on the, on the little hearts and likes and thumbs up and all that helps. Uh, Facebook puts it into their algorithm and they say, oh, you know, there's a lot of people responding. <clears throat> this must be a good video. <clears throat> so anytime you do that, I appreciate it. And welcome also to Shona Clark. <clears throat> so as we um, prepare and Facebook as Facebook gathers a few more people, let's go ahead and connect. As with all of my live streams, I use the song of love, peace, and harmony to open our heart. This is one of the keys of today's wisdom anyway, how to respond to those who have difficulty honoring where we are in our spiritual journey. <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with us having an open enough heart. It, of course, can make a significant difference. Uh, apologize having to stop a sneeze and clear my throat. But uh, uh, let's go ahead and connect. And thank you for all your hearts and happy faces. I really appreciate that. So placing our hands in either prayer position or the other hand mudra 
uh, placing the left hand in front of the heart center. It's referred to as the soul light, soul service hand position. Close your eyes and let us call forth all the beings of light. <coughs> Dear our beloved divine creator, all the beings of light, angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascendant masters, all the gurus, lamas, sifu, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We deeply and humbly and sincerely apologize for our lack of alignment to you, recognition of you, and appreciation for all that you do for us. We ask most humbly from our hearts to join us today. Help us to open our hearts. Help us to be more aware of our journey and other people's journey. And help us with our communication with those closest to us, those whose thoughts and perspectives, those whose words can impact us negatively if we're not uh, careful about our communications. We invite your blessings and your assistance. We ask our own heavens team, guides, angels, and saints to please be present at this time. And our own soul, we're extremely grateful for your unconditional service to our soul journey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> we invite the song of love, peace, and harmony and all of the souls of humanity we invite you to sing love peace and harmony with us at this time to offer your unconditional service and for those that aren't familiar this is a mantra love peace and harmony it's a song it has five lines and it's been translated into over 40 languages uh, which uh, the purpose is so that the the message within the song can be chanted again and again throughout humanity bringing love peace and harmony to all souls so it's truly remarkable uh, the, the value of this service. So we will chant at one time for the purpose of connecting heart to heart, soul to soul, and preparing our energies for the best results. <clears throat> so let us do so. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Lula Halilula, Lula Halilula. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. I skipped the Mandarin Chinese because probably not a lot of you know it. <clears throat> but um, so thank you and welcome, Jessica. Aloha to Samba. Welcome. Thank you for your service. Uh, oh, welcome, Douglas Pastor. Welcome also, Peggy Blake. Welcome, Diana Victoria. Aloha, Don Robinson. Isabel Rice. Welcome. Welcome, Miriam. Uh, if I missed your name, forgive me, I didn't see it pop up. Welcome, Dan. Welcome, Tone. Welcome, Cora. Uh, thank you for your presence. Thank you for clicking the share button, letting other people know about today's live stream. Uh, always value um, where people can have a happier spiritual journey is always a good thing. So today's subject, how to respond to those who have difficulty honoring your spiritual path. It's very key. Those closest to us, typically our lovers, our husbands, wives, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, our children, who somehow, uh, if they're grown children especially, they tend to think that they're a lot smarter than us, even though we have about 20, 30 years of wisdom on them. They're more than happy to, to express their uh, intelligence on this about to us. Also, our brothers and sisters, basically everyone within our close network is so very, very sure that their response, their action, their reaction, their judgment, their criticism needs to be heard by us. It's very, very important because why? Why do they have such an attachment to sharing their opinion, their perspective, their belief upon our world? That's really the key. Because if we are to have an open heart, if we are to be present to their communication, then we must recognize that they have an underlying motive, an underlying motive, motivation. Uh, welcome, Annie Savage. Welcome, Angie May. Aloha, Richard. Welcome, Jen. Uh, Aloha, Rosetta. Welcome, Audrey Chua. 
So it's important to understand this underlying motive. Do you think they really want to irritate you? Do you think they really want to stop you from your spiritual journey? Do you think they want to judge you? It's highly unlikely that they're purposely going out of their way as, as a close family member, a sibling, a brother, sister. It's, they love you. This is the first thing to understand. They love you. So it's highly uh, uh, unlikely that they want to create any form of blockage or suffering in your world on a purposeful basis. So there, there needs to be a different reason that we need to identify that. And so let's take a look at that. Most people who are on a spiritual journey did not wake up, uh, and come out of the womb, pop into this world, and they have two highly enlightened spiritual parents. Mo now, nowadays, that's possible. Uh, we are more enlightened, more aware, and those that are birthing children are bringing them into a world where there is not judgment and not criticism. There's honoring and, and acceptance of all belief systems. Uh, but when you and I grew up, not so much. There is a very clear line and a very clear definition of what you are and not allowed to believe. And for the vast majority of us, after we turn 18 and go out in our own world, we start to explore different possibilities. And we start to uh, be, wow, this Austral uh, astrology thing is really cool, you know, or, 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 or any of the, uh, the different unique ways where our future our path can be divine sometimes it's psychics sometimes it's uh, tarot cards uh, many different ways in which we can try to get some clarity on our future but what this does is it is it opens ourselves up to different questioning of belief systems and you and I have went through this process of questioning what we have been taught since childhood all of us go through layers of this awakening process and even as of today we're all going through layers of this awakening process but in this awakening process that you and I are on it doesn't it absolutely does not mean that your loved ones are on that same process and so we have a twofold problem they are not on the same process as you and they do not understand your uh, desire to explain to them or even to assist them on their awakening process. Now, some do. Some are are, are open to being uh, uh, nudged in certain awakenings. Okay, uh, but a, a a great deal of those, especially those uh, loved ones, right? What are loved ones? Family, friends, best friends, um, uh, brothers, sisters. Our loved ones. Many of them feel it's their job and it's their uh, prerogative to sit you down and explain to you that your path may not be the best one for you. Now, you have to understand, they're coming from a couple of perspectives. One is that their way is the right way. Another is that they know you as the person that they grew up with. You have to remember that you both may have grown up in the same belief systems, and they know that version of you. But once you turned 18 and you start growing on your own, you started experiencing your own things and questioning some things that may have had a lack of validation, a lack of clarity, or they might have, have been a purposeful built into a belief system that has a control measure associated with it. And so you started questioning those things. And as you question those things, you awakened. Well, that other person doesn't know the version of you they went through this awakening process near as much as you might and so they uh, when they communicate to you they're coming from their heart from their love even if what comes out of their mouth is a judgment and a criticism they're still coming from a place of love and this is a uh, difficult for us to understand because at the same time when we are awakening when we have uh, aha moments and when you're on a spiritual path there are a lot of aha moments they're exciting for us. Our soul is yelling with happiness. Our soul is so excited to share with somebody. Please, anybody, can you just listen to my excitement about this new aha moment I've got? I learned about this or I learned about that and, and it's going to change my life. How hard is it to find people of like mind to hear us and be, yes, I'm with you, yay, they're right next to you. Very difficult, actually, especially in the past 20 years. A little bit easier to find them now, okay? Facebook and the advent of internet, easier to find people of like mind. But for a lot of us, almost nobody we could talk to 
while we were going through our awakening process. And that includes those people that are closest to us. I bet, and I want to see a number of hands, how many of you can raise your hand, happy face, unhappy face, whatever, and say, yeah, I made the mistake of trying to share my happiness, my joy, my aha moments with other people, and they proceeded to put me down, or they proceeded to judge or criticize me. Okay, It's highly likely that a good half of you or more have had that experience at some point in your life. So what do we do? We close our heart. Is that going to assist you on your spiritual journey? Well, I didn't close my heart. I just closed my heart to my husband because he doesn't understand. Well, I didn't close my heart. I just closed my heart to my mom and dad because they don't understand. So what happens is we start partitioning ourselves. We start partitioning who we communicate and how we communicate. And the problem with this is we don't allow ourselves to grow when the women around are the people that love us and we love them, we also don't allow ourselves to uh, honor the other person where they're at because when they judge us, what do you think we are doing about them? Whether you want to admit it or not, we are judging their belief. We are judging their response. We are judging because we're, we're in a defensive posture, right? They're judging us. They're criticizing us. We're going to defense mode. But a natural side effect of that is that we naturally judge them. It's a very, um, it's a very heinous actually. It's a, it can be very debilitating because it has led to people's divorces. I have witnessed divorces occur because of this particular problem. We don't want that. In the spiritual journey, it's all about oneness, togetherness. It's about you know coming together in love, right? So we must take a look at the patterns, the underlying patterns that are still going on underneath all this. How can we then love ourselves, honor ourselves? How can we love others and honor them? How can we move the relationship into the present day and not partition off ourselves and our belief systems from others, uh, decide what we can communicate, what we cannot communicate? Some of that still has to remain, but there's a way to accomplish this. How can we keep our friends, our good friends, and still maintain our belief systems? How can we grow ourselves and align with those that we care about at the same time? Okay, There hasn't been a lot uh, shared on this because there hasn't been a lot of uh, perspective brought into it. And most of what I'm sharing is, is, is from chatting with students that have had this problem, uh, asking divine guidance for the how-tos, then offering that guidance and then witnessing the, the positive results. Uh, that's where a lot of this is coming from. Of course, there is a uh, very high level application of the wisdom that Master Shah brings to us because we can contemplate this to death and it's not going to change a dang thing. We can comprehend it and understand it clearly. It's still not going to change anything. We have to be able to apply spiritual wisdom to bring about the necessary change or changes. So the, one of the things that uh, the great wisdoms that the great uh, spiritual teachers bring is that what enters your world uh, is earned. If you have excellent relationships, congratulations, you've earned that. If you have excellent finances, congratulations, you've earned that. If you have um, a poor communication and poor relationships and people just, no matter what you say or how you say it, people always uh, uh, belittling you and putting you down, then there is a communication karma, if you will. Master Shah refers to them as Shen Qi Jing blockages. So one of the uh, highest and best ways to accomplish this is to recognize that whatever enters our world, be it a positive or a negative, we have to take some level of responsibility for it. doesn't mean we caused it 100%, but there's a reason everything comes into our world. Nothing is ever all that accidental. If, it, if it's coming to your world and it's stuck around for more than a week and it's creating problems for you, guarantee it's not accidental, okay? It's something that has an origination point, and typically it's a cause and effect origination point. So you want to look at it from that perspective. From that perspective, we, of course, would apply the deeper wisdoms, apply love, apply forgiveness. Now, before I go into that level of practice, which will happen in a little while, Oh, I want to back up a little bit and start uh, giving you some tools. So let's say that you have an aha moment 
and you want to share with somebody and you're talking to your best friend on the phone and you've already learned before that your best friend is not so keen on this subject matter or maybe it's your mother or your father you love your mother and your father they're always there for you da, 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 da. but when it comes to anything spiritual the light bulb turns off maybe it's your husband or your wife okay you know what I'm saying they just they're not the right person to talk to okay so the first thing to recognize is that you may have come together at this level whether it's mother father brother sister husband wife at some point you all came together in this uh, smooth and communicative uh, way of being together you love each other and they understand you and you understand them and this is how you've interacted but as you grew on your spiritual journey as you awakened your heart on your spiritual journey you started allowing other things to enter now they're still here and you said oh I like this piece of information I will apply this to Romar oh I like this piece of information and you might have dropped a few things you might have did tarot and this okay after three or four years okay that's enough and then you did psychics okay that's enough and then you learned about astrology and you did that for three or four years and you kept some of that but that's enough and then you you found a spiritual enlightened being and you followed them and they moved you up three or four rungs and then that was enough and then you found another spiritual being and so forth you kept moving on your spiritual path because you allowed it well guess where everyone else is that that's been connected to you and so you cannot today communicate with them in a way that is successful you've already tried it it's failed how then do we bring them up well the answer is we cannot bring them up the answer is we must bring ourselves to them in a way that is honoring and loving exactly where they're at because what's happened in this period of time is that there has been a separation of love between you two the you that they knew back here is not the same you that you are today and that's created separation and separation closes your heart it closes their heart it doesn't help anybody so in order to bridge this gap you must reopen your love to them this is how you do it they will not give you the time of day uh, to where you're at until their heart is open when their heart is open by you opening your heart to them again <laughs> if, you, if you go through the processes of realigning to them opening your heart to them which we'll talk about in a minute and you get back down to that hunky dory lovey cushy oh we're all happy again that does not mean you can get download all of the spiritual wisdom that you've, you've done don't do that they'll close right up okay you have to gently release that after you get back down to the level they're at now you're not bringing yourself down to their level that's not what is meant by that uh, verbiage that I'm using uh, what you're doing is you're bringing the love back to where it was at your love has just as separated as theirs you might point to them and say they're not growing I'm the one that's growing why do I even need to be in this relationship the relationship has a soul you have a soul the spouse has a soul you have a soul your parents have a soul brother and sister whoever you have these communication difficulties with you all have souls and in between you is this line and that line is your communication that line of communication has a relationship you have a relationship soul with your mother and father you have a relationship soul between you and your spouse you have a relationship soul between everybody you and your mom and dad have done this many lifetimes this is not the first rodeo you and your spouse have done this many lifetimes it's not the first rodeo so uh, the relationship has a soul right in order to uh, heal that soul whether you're supposed to stay together or not uh, you, of course you can't divorce mom and dad but maybe you're in a relationship with a spouse and you're and you're at your ends of your rope you're spiritually grown and they're just stagnant and you're like I'm bored there's no sex there's no this there's no that you know I'm just gonna move on well there's a reason why this love came together okay and it doesn't mean there's no love there it means you separated mentally and emotionally so in order to bring that back you must bring yourself back to an open heart you must have compassion open your heart they are on their own trajectory for you to judge where they're they're at which does happen because you're here and you're saying they're not there 
okay? And you go through all your processes, and you maybe talk to your best friends over here that are in a similar zone, and you're talking about maybe letting go of that relationship, blah, 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 okay? Well, you are just as judgmental as they have been. Be clear on that, okay? It's a two-way street. So be compassionate for where they're at. Their soul journey is no different than yours. Where they're at is exactly where they need to be for their aspect of the soul journey. Why would you force your opinion upon them? You don't want their opinion forced upon you. So don't force an opinion or perspective or judgment upon them. Honor and be very compassionate for where they're at. Because where they're at is exactly right for them in their soul journey. For example, let's say they're very stuck in the... In the uh, um, Hell and brimstone Christianity teachings, okay? Some people are very st stuck in that level of the teachings. I don't judge it. I use those specific verbiages so that you're clear on, on this exact example. That's a difference. There's a lot of beautiful Christianity and teachings that, that are not hell and brimstone. They're all about an open-hearted God. So there's different layers of these Christian-based teachings. But let's say um, the person you were with is at this, this level. That could be their karma. Maybe they're there because in a previous lifetime, that's what they taught. And it caused people to be very uh, um, diversive in their approach to God. Very black and white. Very uh, uh, separative from God, which is what that kind of teaching is. It's very separative. Uh, if you don't do exactly what I say, you're going to go to hell. It's, it's, it's not a loving teaching. It's a separative teaching. Uh, and so maybe that's where they're at. For their karma because they taught that before so they have to experience the unpleasantness of it and so forth this is where compassion comes in when we can compassionately open our heart to where their mom and dad's at wherever brother or sister's at wherever our best friends at when we can open our heart to where they're at we re-engage our love we can then communicate with them about whatever's happening in their daily life they might they're not sharing with us now but they would if our heart was open to them they would if we truly came to them and said really tell me more i'm truly interested now we may process what they're going through through our awakened mind and we may want to blurt out a potential solution for them but that's not what they're looking for i promise you that's not what they're looking for they're just looking for somebody to listen that's all they just want somebody to listen. And that's what a loving, open heart does. So bring yourself to those people that are near and dear to your life. Bring yourself back to them at the level that you know where you left off at. Be compassionate to wherever they're at. At some point in your compassionate communication where you're just listening and being there for them, being present to them, which is really all that's needed, be present to your best friend. Be present to mom and dad. Be present to your lover. By being present, you are not judging, you are not critical, and you are not offering solutions. None of these they want. They just want your love. And what happens is you start realigning your love. Your heart opens up, and you remember all those good things about this person. You remember the good times, okay? And they're happy because from their perspective, you're the same old person you used to be. And that makes them very happy. And it opens their heart. And everybody wins. Are you starting to get it? It's not simple. And you're not playing a game. You're not pandering to them. You are actually clearing your own heart blockages because you are on a spiritual journey. How do you move forward if you also judge them? If you also say, well, I'm beyond that. Okay? You block your own journey. There's no way you're going to move forward as an enlightened being until you open your heart to them again. So you become present to them where they're at. You love them where they're at. You accept them and be compassionate for them where they're at. Accordingly, your soul journey will start to expand. This is how we align our hearts and souls to those loved ones that judge us and criticize us. So now let's Imagine they come to us into our world and they criticize you and they judge you The question becomes what triggered them to do that? This is very important to understand what triggered them to criticize or judge you from their particular belief system and Putting you down did they want to do that? Did they want to hurt you? Do they have an agenda to put you down? It's highly unlikely that this is what's going on 
more realistic that what's happening is they feel challenged. Maybe not so much by you, but their belief system is their pillar. It's one of their four major pillars in their life. The belief system it's huge it's very very important it's the it's literally like the center of the umbrella through which everything is built upon and so when you talk in a in your own uh, esoteric spiritual way and their belief system is then questioned you might not even be questioning it but because how they receive it it butts up against their belief system it shakes their pillar and they don't like that because their entire world is built around that pillar of belief, whatever it might be. So that's where the compassion and the honoring comes in. So if they go into a defensive posture, if they go into a judgmental posture, if they communicate with you in a way that is not loving, not honoring of where you're at, you have to respond like a spiritual being that you're on the pathway of becoming. You have to remember to respond like a spiritual being. And that is, to open your heart and be compassionate let them go ahead and share whatever they want to share and receive it you know with with the open heart and say I love you I really really appreciate that you love me so much that you want to share your belief and perspective with me I cannot tell you how grateful I am that you love me so much that you want to you know make sure that I'm on the right path because otherwise you wouldn't be sharing this with me this is important to feed back to them if you do not feed this back to them they're just gonna keep going they're just gonna keep plastering you with their perspective okay you must let them know how much you appreciate it but don't stop there but make sure they hear you when you say that pause make sure they hear you and I want you to know clearly how much I honor your perspective, your belief. I was there, and it has great value for everybody that's at that point in their awakening. This is exactly where you're at. It might be higher than mine. I could be down here, and maybe what you're telling me has a value. But I have to honor my own perspective. I have a soul, you have a soul, you have your belief, I have my belief. Can we please agree to love each other? I completely honor your perspective, and I'm so grateful for you wanting to share it with me, maybe to save me or whatever your perspective is. But I want you to know that I'm a big person. I can handle myself. If I make a mistake, and I am actually down here, and I come back around, you'll be the first to know. Okay? But I want us to continue to communicate with love and harmony, honoring and respect, I will go on my spiritual journey, you can still be in yours, and all of our communications will still be loving. Can we make this agreement? And what will happen is their heart will be able to receive that. Their heart will be able to receive that because you paused and you didn't defend, and you let them know how grateful you were for their intention because their intention is twofold. And when you're aware, you'll see it. The first one is, is because they really think they're doing the right thing for you. The second one is because <clears throat> your perspective could shatter theirs, and their whole foundation of their life is built around that belief system. So it's really, really important to honor that and not disrupt or rattle their cage. At the same time, you don't want your <laughs> disrupted or rattled. But this is um, how we can move ourselves to be present to those people that are very close to us we don't want to separate them from our world we do want them close to us and you have to let go this is the, the next part is ego okay where we want other people to understand us and we want people to understand our perspective if you watch enough of my live streams you'll hear me say you know this this may or may not work for you, you do not need to accept this one and I'll repeat it again you know when I hear things that that do not align with me that do not make sense to me or that it's clear that I don't understand enough about it I don't poo-poo on it and this is my recommendation to you my recommendation is to open your heart open your mind and say hmm this is another piece of information uh, for me to believe that I understand everything would be exceedingly foolish and a great deal of ego involved why don't I 
place myself in a position of recognizing that this is a piece of information that may be of value to me at some point in time. I trust my soul's guidance. I don't understand this. I don't agree with it based on everything I currently know, but I'm going to put it over here. And I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to criticize it. I'm just going to put it over here. And maybe at some point in time, additional information will come that will allow me to have different or wider perspective on what this piece of information is, and then I can work with it in a more valuable way. This is an open heart. This is an open mind. This is how people uh, can have the greatest forward momentum in their life instead of uh, the ego response of self-righteousness and being right. So uh, I, I recommend that you adopt that perspective. It can help you a lot, especially when we're communicating with our parents, people, and loved ones. They've done well. You know, sometimes it's our parents. They're just very divisive in their communication to us. Have compassion, okay? We must recognize that there's a reason they're that way. That's where compassion comes in. All right, I'm reading some of the comments here. <clears throat> so how do we do this? There may be someone very, very close to us, and we're here, and they're there, and we really, really want to align this uh, in the most efficient way possible. So now you have the mental understanding. So how do we do it? Applying the soul wisdoms. Well, we apply the wisdom that Master Shah brought to us, the four power technique. Body power, where we place our hands, is where the energy goes. Sound power, what we chant is what we become. Sound power could be a mantra. It could be even the simple word of love. We could chant Jesus, Jesus. We could chant God, 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 God. You can chant anything that has a very high frequency and it will bring value and power to what you're focusing on. That's sound power. Mind power is creative visualization. We already know it works, right? Mind over matter. So we apply those three common sense powers that almost everybody knows about. Body power is where you place your hands, the chi goes. So, uh, the fourth power, the most important power, is soul power because they have a soul. You have a soul. Your relationship has a soul. You could have been going back and forth on this. You could have been the parent uh, telling the child, you have to believe this, you have to believe this, and now they're the parent saying the same thing to you, right? Karma. What comes around goes around. <clears throat> so soul power is exceedingly important. We must communicate at the level of soul. Ask forgiveness for this lifetime and all lifetimes that we may have forced our perspective, opinions, belief systems upon others. There's a reason why these things keep coming to us. It's never accidental. Heaven is very fair. Heaven always gives us opportunities. Those who go through life pointing fingers, it's your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault. Uh, well, you're going to have a lot of trouble in life because you're not taking responsibility. When we have experiences that come to us shift your perspective it's an opportunity where is the lesson to be learned here oh this person is lying to me again and again this must mean i may have lied to others this person is cheating on me again and again what does that mean oh maybe i cheated on others this is how you approach the issues that come into your life use wisdom unwind them reverse the damages <clears throat> with love and forgiveness so let us do this together body power you can keep your hand in prayer position if that's comfortable for you you can drop your left hand in front of your heart center whichever is more comfortable uh, right hand remains pointed towards heaven this is a hand mudra position just like the prayer position and this connects heaven into our heart center close your eyes and i will invite in the beings of light and if comfortable repeat after me Dear my beloved divine creator, dear all of the beings of light that have been invited today, all of the beings of light that wish to come now, my heaven's team, my own soul, I love you, I honor you, I respect you, I thank you for your unconditional love, light, and blessings for my soul and my journey. I am humbled by all that you do for me, seen and unseen. I ask most humbly for your blessings today to bless me to bless and choose one person or today just choose one person that you would like to have much better communication with especially around this subject matter could be mother father whatever 
could you please bless the relationship between me and state that person can you please also as appropriate bless our relationship soul <clears throat> I'm so grateful thank you now we do a forgiveness continue to repeat if comfortable dear the soul of this most beloved friend you know my husband my wife state them the soul of our relationship I love you with all my heart you are so important to me in my world I wish to sincerely apologize my lack of compassion and understanding my lack of awareness of what you might be going through as I continue to grow and separate I recognize now that this separation has not benefited us I recognize now that it has created more trouble in our relationship and I truly want our relationship to be healed I would love us to return to the love we have always had for each other without the separation difficulties that have come up please forgive me my beloved uh, state their name for this and any lifetime that I have put you down spoken to you in a manner that was disrespectful or dishonoring judged or criticized you or your belief systems your spiritual choices if I have done any of these things I sincerely from the bottom of my heart apologize please forgive me in this and all lifetimes where I have separated from you as a result of these poor communications please forgive me in this lifetime for my lack of awakening compassion and communication <clears throat> that would have assisted us to remain much closer I sincerely apologize state their name again dear my beloved I forgive you for your judgments your criticisms I forgive you your efforts to derail my spiritual journey I forgive you for all of the unpleasant thoughts words and actions I forgive you for pulling away from me for the separativeness that has occurred between us I release you fully and completely of this and any lifetime that we have had these communications <clears throat> I ask for your forgiveness and I offer you my unconditional forgiveness let us move forward in love and peace and harmony we will use the mantra I love you if you don't know it you will learn it quickly and as you sing this mantra send your greatest love to this soul that you're thinking of see the blockages in their heart opening and clearing see the blockages in your heart opening and clearing see the relationship becoming closer together let us sing this mantra with love in our heart. I love you. 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 I Open your heart send them your love ask forgiveness for the separation offer forgiveness for the separation I love you I love you I I love 
love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. One more time. I love you. 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 And bow your head to this loved one. Give them a big soul hug. Tell them that you will do better in your future communications. And we ask all the souls to respectfully return. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So share, how was this experience for you? For those of you that came in late, that practice was at, done at the level of soul. And I'm going to keep chatting while I'm waiting for your sharing. Um, what does that mean at the level of soul? everyone has a soul and the souls at the level of soul they want your relationship to be strong and healthy and loving and not separative because separative relationships create karma and karma you need to deal with it again and again and again who really wants to go around that what will some more right so when we deal with things at the level of soul by having soul communication you can solve so many problems so fast forgiveness when done at the level of soul is extraordinary it can move mountains faster than any verbal communication you can imagine why because at the level of soul you're resolving the Shen Qi Jing karma blockages and their soul feels the love forgives you their soul then goes back to the ear of the personality the person right and says you know this person really loves you they really miss you communicating with you you should really connect with them a little more and that's exactly what happens I can tell you I've received a lot of communications where I can't believe that happened I did this practice for a week or two and then out of the blue they called and they haven't talked to them in five years and da, 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 da. very normal occurrence connect at the heart level have soul communication offer forgiveness ask for forgiveness reconnect and when you talk to them on the physical level apply the wisdom shared earlier okay so I hope you all appreciated this for those that came in late this will become a video in a little bit and I want to invite you to a live stream that will be happening tomorrow um, Lisa Berry is a, an amazing radio show host she's on Ohm Radio. Okay, Ohm Radio is not a small uh, radio station. It's worldwide internet. And uh, she has very um, uh, generously asked me to join her tomorrow and on uh, Wednesday the 28th for a live show in which we're going to be going uh, on the subject of love, of all things, right? We have Valentine's Day coming up. So we'll be talking about the subject of love. And I encourage you to join that Ohm Radio go to home radio type in Lisa Berry just like it sounds and you'll find her immediately and you can join live at that time and Lisa if you are live you can drop in the link to the calling uh, in the chat and that's another way that people can learn more about this uh, she came on a little while ago and uh, maybe she had to run I don't know if she can still stay or not and so Janelle says um, and this is going to be let's see what time Okay, so it's 8 a.m. No, excuse me, 9 a.m. Hawaii time, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. 9 a.m. Hawaii time, 11 a.m. Pacific time, um, 
2 p.m. Eastern time. If you're in the middle, sorry, you have to figure it out. And that's going to be 7 p.m. in the UK, 8 p.m. in um, uh, Central Eastern European time. It's going to be 6 a.m. in the morning for those uh, waking up in Australia. And that'll be, of course, Thursday morning. Uh, and then 11 a.m. for those in Kiwi land. Uh, India, it's going to be very late for you, probably about um, uh, midnight or 12.30 in the morning for you in India. But I encourage you to join. Um, so let's read some of these comments. So Janelle, uh, this is a beautiful experience, exactly what I have needed at this time. Thank you. I'm so grateful for learning. Wonderful. Thank you, Janelle. And if you're new to me, like and subscribe on Facebook, and then you'll know when I go live. Sometimes Facebook's algorithms, they don't tell everybody, but that's just Facebook. But you can, uh, you know, I'm always live on uh, Tuesdays at noon and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Hawaii time. And then Cora, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Rosetta. Uh, welcome, Teresina. Thank you. She says, can we use this with different people? Yes, absolutely. This wisdom applies in all conditions. Uh, very beautiful, says Jessica. Wonderful. So I want to thank you all for your presence. Thank you for clicking the share button, letting other people know about this live stream. And... Uh, I will be back uh, on Facebook live stream uh, Thursday, but uh, I encourage you to um, to uh, uh, join me tomorrow, Wednesday, on the Ohm Radio Show. Uh, type in uh, Lisa Berry, uh, Ohm Radio in Google, and she'll pop right up, <clears throat> and then you can learn about tomorrow's show as well. Okay? Um, after I hang up here, I'll go back and put it in the chat. So love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For those that came in late, make sure you watch the recording. It'll become a recording in about 30 seconds. Bye-bye.